I'm talking about roots. I can't hate where I'm from. Cause where I'm from make me. Cause where I'm from make me. I came from the bottom of the slums. But now I got me, me. That's because of my roots. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm talking about roots. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm talking about roots. Hey, I can't be mad at what got me ahead. I don't regret my ghetto struggle due to my success. It ain't that beautiful to ride or overcome and stress. Top ramen noodle soup, happy for the fact I was fed. Look at me now, but all before, hey, Mr. Skid Row. The dirty stuff ain't just the name, the way I been po. The projects, brown and white, I call it gizmo. Went from a grimmin' to them gods and jigger video. Can't find a meal to a meal, only God know it. No record deal to a deal, I work hard for it. Can I live to them living like my mama told it? Before you reap it, gotta sow it, yeah. I'm talking about roots. I can't hate well. Hello, welcome back to another edition of JW Football Talk. I'm your host, Cody Johnson, along my co-host, Cody Wolf. And then today we got a special guest, former Oklahoma Sooner running back, current Cincinnati Bengals running back, Rodney Anderson, man. Thank you for coming on. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I really appreciate y'all having me on here. Yeah, man, we appreciate you coming on. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so let's let's get right into this, man. So with, we kind of wanted to talk to you about first just how y'all – the players you your teammates are dealing with the current situation as in coronavirus how y'all are handling gyms being closed i don't know if y'all can go up to the facilities right now uh just stuff like that can you tell us a little bit how the players are handling this uh yeah so i mean basically you know it all hit during the middle of off season so we were kind of off all kind of scattered about all over the united states and uh um basically the nfl kind of just you know issued a statement saying it if, if you're in a place with a stay-at-home order, then you're not allowed into your stadiums or facilities or anything like that. And so as far as uh, the Bengals go, we're locked out of our facilities until at least the 29th of May. And I guess they'll reassess then. But uh, since we've been doing um, uh, virtual meetings, you know, on um, what's it called, on Zoom. Mm-hmm. So we just kind of get on, do team meetings on Zoom. We'll do position meetings on Zoom. Still staying in contact, but... As far as working out goes, we got to do all that by ourselves and just try to make the most of it. Yeah. So I've seen you your workout videos you've been posting on Instagram and stuff. So do y'all just you working out at uh, wherever you can find a spot to work out? You got a gym at home or what? Um, I actually uh, just invested in my own little um, little half rack in the garage and then mm-hmm. have a couple of hills and fields around where I live. So I'm just trying to get out and do what I can. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Yeah, so. For the draft process, you know, obviously for the guys this year, it was, you know, all crazy with the coronavirus and everything was pretty much, you know, thrown for a loop. You underwent a more conventional draft process, you know, what are some things that sort of stuck out to you, you know, something good, bad or indifferent? Um, I don't know. I think I think there were some goods and some bads. I mean, obviously a, a big um, negative is that, you know, that night that those players get, you know, all the first round players, especially, you know, to dress up, you know, get, take their families, you know, on, you know, limos and spend some dinners and stuff like that. You know, I feel like that, you know, was missed, but at the same time, you know, you replace that and, and uh, you replace that with, you know, with their families. So, I mean, they get to spend their draft night with their families in their own home. So that's special in itself, but at the same time, I'm sure that they miss the, you know, the lights and the cameras, mm-hmm. and, and that's fun. Let me ask you this. That, that 2017 year at Oklahoma, what was that like for you? Because that was amazing to watch, you know, growing up with you. We all saw your ability and stuff like that. So watching you actually put it out on the field and start dominating everybody, what was that like, you know, for you playing at, especially like at a Blue Blood school like Oklahoma? Uh, honestly, it was just it was just so much fun. I mean, I knew what I could do, and I knew that I just needed my chance. And so – you know, just for me, it was about being patient and just trusting the process. And, you know, eventually I got my name called and I just made the most of it. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. And that was just that was great to watch. Sorry, I got to say it again. But yeah, um, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, man. So since we're on that, I kind of want to talk to you a little bit about your your injuries. Can, mm-hmm. can you tell everybody what they were at first so we can kind of have an idea? Uh, OK, so my freshman year. At OU, I broke my uh, my left leg um, uh, on kickoff, 
against Tennessee and then came back from that. And in 2016, I right before the season started in the last uh, in the last practice of training camp, I think I broke my neck. I fractured my C5 vertebrae. And then I came back from that. Uh, didn't have to have surgery or anything. Uh, had a good 2017 season. And then 2018, I started out I started out good and then tore my ACL in the second game and then had another ACL tear pretty much a year later in the fourth preseason game with the Bengals. Oh, okay, okay. So can you kind of tell us, you know, having multiple – or just actually first, just tell us that neck injury, man. How – when that happened, what – like, can you just explain to us what it felt like when it happened on the field? It was it was actually really weird because – so I was stumbling forward, like gaining yards. I had just passed the line of scrimmage, and I kind of got clipped by I don't know, maybe a linebacker or something. And so I was stumbling. I had my hand on the ground, and – uh, a safety was coming. Like he was gonna come and show that he made the tackle, but he went to pull off. But while he was pulling off, he kind of he got hit too, and so his knee caught me in the side of the head. And uh, so it, I mean, it felt like I just got hit. You know, just like a, a pretty good hit. Uh-huh. And, you know, kind of dazed me a little bit. I was like, oh man, and it got up, jogged off. You know, my neck felt a little stiff at first, and then I came back in for another play. And it just got like really stiff. I didn't make any contact on that play, but it just got so just I could hardly turn it. And so I went off, got an MRI the next morning, and it was broke. <laughs> wow. Wow. So what was that healing process like for you? Was that tough? It so it was <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie to you, it was terrible. Like it was they had me in a hard, uh, a hard neck brace for three months, and it, it was literally just I, I was blessed to say that, you know, that's all it was because all I had to do was just let it heal. But it sucked at the same time because I, I just, I was literally in a neck, I was just sitting up straight like this. And every time I had to like turn my head, I had to, to move my whole body. And like, Ooh. it was just, it was just uncomfortable, but had to go through it. Yeah, man, that, yeah, I, that, ugh, I can't, I can't imagine. I can't imagine. But going on to the, the ACL tears, you know, you said you had one in 20. 20- 18 and then one last year with the Bengals having multiple was it the same leg or were they different legs it was the same one it was the same leg so having multiple injuries on the same leg like that how does the healing process differ from the first time to the second time does that make sense to you yeah um I I would say personally just the fact that I I know what to expect now because uh, I mean the first time I you know I'd never had uh, a ligament injury like that and so, especially in my knees so you know it was weird I didn't really know like what the healing process was supposed to be like how things were supposed to be feeling at certain dates and on top of that I was to be honest I was kind of trying to push it a little bit to make it back for things like uh, the combine the draft mini camp OTAs and so I'm sure there was a little bit on my part too just trying to push things to get back for my rookie season but um, this time around, I'm taking things like a lot slower, making sure everything's perfect. There's not really anything rushing me to get back uh, at the moment, so I'm really just taking my time with it. Yeah. So, the, um, how much longer do you have for recovery timetable-wise for for the current current ACL? Uh, I'm set to to be fully released uh, for training camp. Oh, awesome, awesome, perfect, dude. We can't we can't wait to watch it personally. I mean, but. Yeah. Um, you know, I want to ask you this. Going into kind of the Bengals a little bit, when we were growing up in high school, we were watching guys like A.J. Green. You know, he, that's when he was tearing up the league. So when you got into the locker room and, you know, guys like that were in there, guys like him or uh, Geno Atkins, stuff like that, what is it like getting in the locker room meeting those guys that we were watching in high school? Uh, it's it's kind of surreal, to be honest with you. Like, like you grow up watching these guys and, like, you know, you were like, oh, man, they're they're the best, they're the best. And then you don't really realize like how good they are like until you see them out there like running around doing their thing in person. And so, I mean, it's it's, it's surreal. It's it's crazy, honestly. Yeah, man. It, uh, we both love the NFL, you know. Obviously, we both love college ball. But just you know, seeing you, watching you grow up, and you know, playing at Katy High School, and then getting to Oklahoma, and then now in the NFL is just—it's awesome to watch. Obviously, you know the Joe Burrow hype train. You know, it, it's rolling through. You know, everyone's going to be talking about that. But uh, 
outside of yourself, of course, are there any other players, you know, on that Bengals team that nobody in the media is really talking about that you think come this time next year kind of make a name for themselves? Um, hmm, I would have to say uh, if I had to throw some names out, I'm, he's kind of a name here in Cincinnati, but I don't hear a lot of people talk about him uh, outside as uh, Alex Erickson. He's just kind of like that, um, that jack of all trades on the offense and the special teams. If you try to put him anywhere and he always shows up, and you have people like Seathan Carter, who's really versatile on the offense as well, very good uh, blocker, as well as a, a great with his hands, very good catcher. Um, okay. You know, a lot of guys like that that can just do everything. But, I mean, then you have people like A.J. Green, Joe mm-hmm. Burrow, you know, the, Joe Mixon. They'll, they'll take yeah. the highlight a little bit, but definitely a solid squad as far as, you know, uh, underrated players go. Definitely, definitely. I'm real excited to see what uh, Coach Taylor, you know, I know he's one of those creative offensive guys, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to see what you all do next year. I think you guys got an incredibly talented roster, especially on offense. I think it's really I definitely think so, too. It's it's, it's weird because last year, you know, it was the first uh, first year for his offense, and we was all learning still, and we lost A.J., and it was it was tough because, you know, we as an organization could see all the things that we have in the building, mm-hmm. all the weapons we got, the offense that we can run, but it just wasn't necessarily clicking on the field. And I think that's just, you know, that's just the the new the new uh, system coming into play. And I think it'll be a lot smoother this this year. Yeah. Nice. Cool. So before you ask the, the Andy question, Cody, just since we brought up Joe Burrow, you know, having that number one overall pick. For since I did, I mean, you might. I know you don't have, are involved in the front office stuff, obviously. But did y'all kind of, the team kind of know where y'all were going with that pick? Um, I mean, like you said, they kind of keep us in the dark. But right, right. We kind of feel it. I mean, you know, uh, I mean, it, it's pretty simple. I mean, you you see the number one pick, you see <laughs> that, you know, the owners are kind of looking for quarterbacks. So it's mm-hmm. it's like it's obvious. So you know. Cody over here, he's a Texans fan. I'm a Cowboys fan. You know, Cowboys, they just signed Andy Dalton, you know, the one-year $7 million deal. Yep. Obviously, they're not bringing him in to compete with Dak. But, uh, you know, all I've ever heard about this guy is that he's a great teammate, you know, super nice guy, a real class act in person. You know, did you ever have any, you know, any instances with Andy where you saw the sort of character that that he has or anything yeah. like that? It's, it's actually a funny story. So, I – the first time I met Andy Dalton was when I was in like the second, maybe first or second grade. We went to oh, okay. it was like it's like the home of champions camp, like the little uh, Katie yeah. football, whatever camp in the summertime at the end. And uh, I, it was weird. I, I, that's when I met him for the first time. I, I had no clue, like, you know, who he was. I was just moving to Katie. And then, you know, years and years later, now we're on the same team. And back in the day, I mean, he, you know, he took the time, you know, to say hello to just a little like nine 10 year old kid or whatever. And, you know, walking into the locker room for the first time last year, uh, it was, he was the same guy, you know, just willing to take time for anybody. Um, you know, just nice, thoughtful, you know, he, he cares about other teammates, cares about other people and just, just a good guy. Awesome. Awesome. That's good to hear. Yeah. Yeah, man. So real quick, before we get into the, the last question I have for you, I kind of want to ask, you know, Playing with a guy like Baker Mayfield at Oklahoma, and now y'all are in the same division. I'm just curious. I'm just curious. Since y'all are in the same division, do y'all ever do you have a little rivalry between y'all selves? Because I know I seem like y'all are pretty close to Oklahoma, so you have a little rivalry before game day, stuff like that? Yeah, I mean, so it's, it's where we had some words whenever, you know, I'd see him in, like, Norman or something. And then especially whenever I figured out that I got uh, picked up by the Bengals, so, you know, there was a few words, but, um, you know, I, I don't really see him as much as I used to at Oklahoma or talk to him as much. So, But there's definitely that camaraderie or that rivalry after the games, you know, when players get to, you know, come to switch jerseys and stuff. It's always good to see uh, former teammates. Gotcha. Awesome. So I was just kind of curious about that. Uh, so my last question, then I'll let Cody ask anything if you have anything else. So we all see the, the family tri- trilogies or – that's not the right word, but family's coming in the NFL. Like, you got the Watt brothers. You got the Bosa brothers, the Manning brothers. You know, little tidbit, I mean, not. I don't know how many people know in Cincinnati. I'm sure everyone does up there that follows a team like that. But you have some family history in the league. Can you uh, kind of tell us about a little bit about that? 
Yeah, um, my uncle, Mark Anderson, uh, was drafted out of Alabama to the Chicago Bears in 06, I'm pretty sure is what it was. And um, yeah, he played for like nine years, ended up, he went to, he got drafted by the Bears, then went to the, I think it was the Patriots after that. He was on the Texans for a year. Yeah, it might have been the Texans, then the Patriots. Yeah, and then, yeah. yeah, that's what it was. And so, but yeah, I mean, watching him uh, all through Alabama, uh, his career at Alabama, and uh, all through his career with the NF- in the NFL uh, was just very inspirational and, you know, definitely someone that uh, I look up to and can call on any time I, I need questions or I have uh, questions or need advice. Gotcha. So, you know, I know y'all, when y'all are drafted, good and far ways apart, but in his draft process might have been different from yours, of course, right? So, but going through that, did he help, did he, ugh, did he help with your draft process and stuff like that? Did you go to him or kind of maybe have guys that just recently got drafted that you talked to? Um, You know, it, it was weird because I kind of knew, hmm. I kind of knew what to expect a little bit because I'd had those conversations with my uncle before. Okay. Um, so, you know, really it was, it was mostly just about being relaxed and just having faith in whatever team was going to pick me up. You know, it's something you can't control. So, you know, why worry about it? Oh, cool. That's cool. That's awesome, man. Uh, so, Cody, do you have any questions that you want to ask real quick? Man, nothing. I just want to say, dude, thank you. It's an honor. Seriously, I'm a diehard Sooners fan. That 2017 year, that Georgia game, man, uh, and- I'm sorry about the defense. <laughs> I am. You, you killed it, crushed it. I can't wait to watch you crush it this year for Cincinnati, man, seriously. No, I appreciate it. Man. We we appreciate you coming on, man. We can't wait to see what – what can you come back from this injury like we were talking about earlier, come back and start showing everybody what you got, you know. So, again, thank you for coming on. Can't wait to watch you future seasons. Yeah, no problem. Man. Thank you all for having me. Oh, yeah. of course.